What up, family? Get on this sport, man. That's tuning in. Lee. Today is Wicked Wednesday in my city, Chicago, October the 6th, 2021, so they say. It could very well be 2020 due to leap year. I just want to make a short um, notice about uh, my window not being fixed as of today. Like I said, October the 6th, 2021, it is still cracked and my um, sink is still messed up as far as the uh, water not going down. Um, everything is problematic in my life due to the fact that I'm an originator of rap and I've been an originator of rap since the age of eight, 1975. I've made a lot of people uh, buku money and stuff by being a decent person and thinking, you know, they would forgive themselves and their conscience would allow them to do so after uh, taking advantage of me as a little girl and putting me in the Chicago Sun-Times newspaper at the age of six in 1973. And now I know why, just to um, let everybody know who they was going to railroad, work to death, and eventually kill. And anybody that is a Mary McAmira, I guess they was going to do them the same way and stuff because it's called the process of elimination. Now, I'm the best at what I do in my city, Chicago. Like I said, I'm an originator of a whole lot of stuff. I'm an originator of your ghetto news report. I'm an originator of this uh, Chicago spelling. You understand what I'm saying? Even though Chicago is spelled C-H-I-C-A-G-O, but it's the same thing if you see Chicago. You understand what I'm saying? So that lets you know what kind of mind I'm working with. And, you know, a lot of people, especially guys, are not, you know, appreciative, if I should say, you know, when it comes to that. For some reason or another, they think I'm their enemy when the fact of the matter is I had their best interest in heart or at heart even after the fact of them, you know, taking advantage of me as a little girl, five guys and, you know, doing me dirty and keeping up the, the, the nonsense, man. It doesn't make sense, you know. When God give you a, um, a break, you should take advantage of that and not a person who you know, allowed you to uh, have another chance of taking care of your family like a man. Now, everybody say, oh, you act like a man. When I was trying to act like a lady and grow my hair out, they gave me cancer. They railroaded me, put me in prison, said I disarmed a police officer, something I did not do on Devon and Clark, not too far from the Valentine Day Massacre, you know, location. A lot of this stuff I didn't know, but because my life is in danger, I have to figure out a lot of stuff, and that's why I'm become the best ghetto news reporter you ever heard, and the first at that also, you know, like I said, you know, they hate people that's first and stuff because, you know, they didn't think of it, I guess. I, but so what they do is, if you're the first at something, they allow you to get all that money or whatever, and then they kill you, and then, you know, they become big big um, establishments, organizations, things of that nature or whatever and stuff. I don't know. I would like to make it make sense and I've tried the best I could. And even though I do the best at that, they still act like I'm crazy. The um, scripture today though is Second Samuel chapters one and two. Now, they can take heed or not, but chapter two, you know, said to cease fighting. You understand? In AA Alcoholics Anonymous, he said we cease fighting everything and everybody. But if you have people coming at you, you can't you can't be a doormat. You can't be, you know, a punching bag or a pin cushion like they did me in twenty sixteen and um dope me up knowing I don't drink drug or smoke my sobriety years December nineteen ninety seven. Christmas. 1997. I had 19 years of sobriety when they held me down and gave me shots of God knows what it was, probably cancer, like I said, because my hair has yet to grow back and the way it's supposed to. And, you know, my body is, is trying to, you know, recuperate or whatever and stuff, but they made the coronavirus happen. So, you know, I'm on the bus. I got to you know, through things, I can't lay around and die because that's what would happen, and that's probably what they thought. I would just, you know, give up and stuff, and that's what they want you to do. They want you to lose hope, turn to dope, and, you know, act like you can't cope. But as long as you can stand up, get up, look up, you can come up one way or another. 
and that's all they doing coming up off of me. People are living out their best life, their bucket list. I guess they put me on it. And, you know, I have yet to get anything for all my, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. But I believe my higher power will, you know, vindicate me one way or another, dead or alive. We got our do or die stages in our lives. And so, you know, if people do all this for money, imagine what they'll do for drugs, sex, and rock and roll, I guess. I don't know. Um... All I have to say to my real Mary McAmyras, you have to really be uh, on your P's and Q's because of the holidays and things of that nature or whatever. Chicago wasn't as bad as it is now, but because we have all walks of life, come to see your girl nine times out of ten, they don't want to admit it, but you know, most of them are pretty cordial now, I guess, since they have a better understanding of who I am and what I've been through and probably realize that, you know, we are we have more, you know, similarities than, you know, anything else. And I'm so glad my higher power didn't allow me to get a new car and a real vacation and things of that nature and stuff. Because now I feel like I'm just like one of the, the homeless because I'm getting closer to that also. You know, around this time, they like putting people out in the cold. So, you know. I'm not going to no hotel or nothing, so I guess all the um, agencies going to have to, you know, pimp me that way because uh, it's about to be a recession. We can't afford rent and things of that nature and stuff. You know, that's what Joe Biden said. You know, ain't no money. You know, even though we made buku money, say ain't no money. It might be a recession. So ain't no money is a recession. You know, we can't pay. We can't, you know. We can't take food out of our mouths. You know, we need that. You understand what I'm saying? We need money to eat and stuff, real so. We don't know what's going to happen day to day. So, you know, I believe after paying rent for so long, you know, just like you work a job for so long, they give you a vacation. If you've been paying rent for so long, you should get a break. That's how I look at it like that. So, you know, I'm on a rent strike until they fix, you know, the necessary repairs in my um room if not you know then they have to do the necessary paperwork i guess in order to you know see why they haven't when i have paperwork saying they should have and you know also the money order that um proves that i made an attempt at least to pay you understand what i'm saying for real for real you understand you see what it's going so real mary mcmyers if you know somebody know somebody know somebody know somebody Please, this is when I need your help the most and stuff because my life is definitely in danger. You should know me by now. And this is not a cry for help or plead or nothing like that because, you know, I got plenty of evidence and that's what they want to come for. The evidence. I was out and about Monday and, you know, I did another video and I don't know if it's going to go through because I went a second over 15 minutes. Some phone, Some phones allow you to go you know, longer, some shorter. So just in case it didn't, I was out and about and um, this so-called undercover white guy in a gray truck was, he came through the alley and came up this like gangway, empty empty lot where a house probably was on. You understand what I'm saying? And I saw him and stuff. So I took a picture, you know, and, but he ain't had no license plate. All right. And I looked to my right and because they always be trying to cut you off and stuff and they try to abduct me you know, last year, but they got George Floyd, and, you know, and George Floyd supposed to have died on my birthday, May 25th, imagine that, so birthdays was the worst days, Christmas is worse, and my sobriety year is December 25th, 1997, okay, I didn't get shit for, for my birthday, so not, not in here, and I've been teaching these motherfuckers left and right everything that I know and worked my ass off for for the last 48 years, not a happy birthday, and if they did, you know, you know, I paid them some rent and they say, oh, happy birthday. You understand what I'm saying? If you ain't giving them shit, they ain't gonna acknowledge you pretty much. So the other police was in blue and white. He was coming as soon as dude was crossing. So I took a picture of him and then I kept going because I guess they realized, you know, I'm not crazy or whatever and stuff. Now in the beginning, when I didn't know what was going on, I was a little, you know, kind of confused and stuff. You understand? That wasn't crazy. That was just, you know, I just didn't know. It's like working a job that you don't know and people have to train you or whatever. So I had to train myself how to act like 
or think, not act, but think like a criminal-minded person or so, because we got a lot of criminal-minded people acting like the police, I should say. You understand what I'm saying? And those was not the police who railroaded me May 31st, 2008, on Devon and Clark and said I disarmed a police officer, something I did not do. They disarmed me, a peaceful person, in 1995 when they set me up and, you know, someone told them I had, you know, a gun, but it was legal and I had a, a license for it or whatever. So they basically wanted to disarm me so I can be out here getting beat up like I have gotten beat up a couple of times, you know, after I posted my first ever YouTube video, Mary Mack versus the Fat Black Oprah Winfrey on November 2007. Now, before that, I wasn't getting beat up, nothing like that for at least 10 to 12, 13 maybe years and stuff because they needed me and it was, you know, psychoanalyzing me i guess and critiquing me and trying to figure out how they can infiltrate me and they wanted the book that i was writing at the time award the state slash coming out hard but i flipped it and wrote rhymes poems and metaphors plus one song you understand what i'm saying and i had uh, a lot of proof to go with it just like i have a lot of proof now that would um uh, incriminate a lot of people and stuff and every time they arrest me they get a whole bunch of proof and stuff and this is pretty much the last proof so the last proof if they get this i'm gonna need my um, real Mary McAmyra's to get the proof that you know you have, and that's my book, Rhymes, Poems, and Metaphors, plus one song, because when they put me on the psych ward uh, the day after Mother's Day, May 9th, after sleeping on the police station floor, first district in my city, Chicago, on Mother's Day, May 8th, with no toilet, no bed, no sink, just a floor and a with a hole in the middle of it, on Mother's Day, to let you know, ladies, how much they care about you. They don't. They don't give a fuck. They just want you to have a baby, and then after that, you know, it's on to the next one, and they rape your baby and start it over again, kill you, and the baby don't know what's going on, and you done made all that money, and woo out the bank. They just use us and stuff. One person told me for real, for real, on the west side, at another agency called Breakthrough Urban Ministry that I had got too old. A staff member told me. I said, my money didn't get too old. You understand what I'm saying? I don't drink drugs, smoke a fornicate. You understand? But they held me down. The day after Mother's Day, like I say, May 9th at the Cook County Jail, gave me um, some kind of drugs and I believe it was cancer because, you know, I feel some kind of way. And then, you know, they saw that I wasn't going to do what they thought and that become a drug addict or they thought that was going to kickstart me to do drugs or whatever and stuff. No, 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 no. I did the right thing. I'm doing the right thing. And then I got here and I thought this was a recovery sober building. Come to find out everybody's drinking, drugging and smoking and doing what they want to do and trying to um, kick me out so they can get some free stuff so they can probably get high, drink, drug and smoke some more or whatever and stuff. They've come in my room. They have flooded my bathroom. They tore down my, um, my cabinets and stuff. They uh, believe everybody had a key. And if it affects them, they really turn up like, you know, you know, they change my lock without me being here. You understand? Stuff like that. You understand? And, you know, it wasn't even 24 hours and they couldn't wait. But they haven't fixed this window that they messed up or that, you know, sink in there that they messed up or whatever and stuff. So basically, they just want you to lose hope and turn to dope. And that ain't my story and stuff. Real talk. You know, I've promoted a lot of people and they knew I would be, um, uh, you know, doing my best to prove my innocence and things of that nature, while at the same time they're coming up off of me. And if I die, then I guess everybody would be like, well, we ain't got to do nothing but lay back and wait for the customers and stuff. Real Mary McAmyers do not support them. If I die, make it worse than what it is for me right now for them. I really would appreciate it because you know real customer service came from me. We were like family, and I treated the Mexicans, Hispanics like family, and they did me dirty at Clark Mall and stuff before I could get started. You know, the reason why they're going hard body now is because Hispanic American Month is uh, uh, September 15th through October 15th. I didn't know that. You understand what I'm saying until, what, yesterday or earlier? You understand what I'm saying? And um, I got beat up doing Black History Month on the West Side. You feel me? Real talk. Now, why is it Black History Month got 28 days in it, unless it's 29, you know, and they get September and October almost like two months. You understand what I'm saying? Seem like two months, but it's but these are the games they play. They think it's a competition, but it's not. I treated them like family. They treated me like shit, and you know they behind a lot of stuff that 
is unnecessary and they got the most to lose. Imagine that, biting the hand that feeds you and stuff. Do you really care about your family? That's the question. That's not a threat. That's your motherfucking problem now, not mine. With that, this is your ghetto news reporter, Mary Dash, Queen of Mary Lee. Step your game up, family. Peace.